began this dream of creating this dance school? Uh, it started uh, when probably when we uh, had to move to France uh, to train because there wasn't a good place or strong enough school in Canada that uh, could train us. And it really frustrated me that I had to move from Canada, the home of figure skating, where there's an ice rink on every corner, to a country where there was less uh, skating rink in the whole country than in the city of Montreal. So uh, I, I, it got me to be really thinking, and I promised myself that when we stopped skating, that we would start a school here in Canada, and, and then the people would have a choice if they wanted to train Canada, at least the school was there. How much fun has it been? To have the chance to work with uh, so many uh, talented skaters that at, at the top of the world, it's pretty amazing. And when you get to work with like a Tessa and Scott, uh, Gabriel and Guillaume, or, it's pretty crazy because you can do whatever you want, especially in ice dance where you're all about creating and trying to create different uh, shapes and movement and passions. And, and with those kids, you have the opportunity to do whatever you want because they're so talented, so it's a lot of fun. Take us through that moment when you guys learned that the Olympic champions were going to come and train with you. Um, we always took them like, like our, our little babies. And they helped. said to me <laughs> that you always had their back. Always, always. They saw us as mentors and we didn't see competition in them. We saw the future. So it was always that approach we had with them. Um, so when, when they felt, you know, a little bit not sad but unsatisfied in 2014 before Olympics during the Olympics uh, they talked to, to us they talked to Patrice during Sochi and and you know we always mentored them or helped them through the the hard parts of their career even without being their coach um, so after 2014 when they they did you know tours and shows they came to train here because they didn't have really a training site in Detroit anymore so they came here for choreography and and to train before shows so little by little that's how I think it started to spark the desire to come back to competition and, and train with us as coaches with the progress that they've made they had the best score ever at the Grand Prix final yeah uh, su surprised and not because the level of commitment in which they they attack this season um, I mean, they're not kids anymore. They're professional athletes, and that's how they treat themselves, and that's how they they treat people around them. So they're a great example for everybody in this school. And then they let you and guide you. Oh, yeah, I think we're just like. Yeah, that was the only sticky part. The rest was really nice. They told us that uh, they love it here because of the environment, but also because how honest you are and have been with them. Was that difficult at the beginning to be that honest, to tell an Olympic champion, hey, Scott, maybe you got to do it this way, or Tessie, you've got to do it this way? They didn't want to come back and skate the same way they were skating uh, in Sochi. They wanted to be different. They wanted to improve different part of their skating. So then I didn't feel shy to tell them, like, like if you want to be different, you need to do that better that, in that section. So I was, they were very open about it. How crazy is your life? <laughs> like, you're here in this life? one rink. What life? You're here in this <laughs> rink. You're together. You, you, you got to have a family and all these other things that go on, but your family is here too with these skaters. The work of a skating coach is, is pretty crazy. And it, first of all, it's, it's all day. Like, it's, like the, when you go back home, after you're, you're done, done, you're not done. <laughs> yes, there's, there's planning to do, there's music research, uh, costumes, and, and it's, schedules. It's, it's, it's all day long. It's a very you demanding. You hear music in your sleep, <laughs> you do choreography in your sleep. Absolutely. Uh, it's very demanding. And then you have to travel. Uh, like, we're lucky enough that we have other coaches with us, so I know I have to be on the road all the time because I do most of the travel, but I would literally be gone if you were alone. But. So, but I end up being gone a lot. Mm -hmm. Is this close to skating for you? Is it kind of like still skating, giving back to the sport, being there? When I was skating, it was all about me. It was all about me and her. Now, it's nothing is about me. Like, it's, it's all about them. <laughs> it's reverse. And, that, and that's, it, that is, it, it, I think it's closer to, to being a parent. Like, 
I get my greatest moment in this as every day at training when I, because I'm the one that tell, uh, decides what they have to do during the day and I make the schedule. And I know when I make a schedule, it's really hard. And I see them going through it and, and putting the effort it, and yeah. push through it. I, I find that very uh, moving and very fun to see them pushing themselves harder. And then when you get to go to a competition and you watch them. And it just put, unravels on the perfect and put them, version. Yeah, and put them on the spot at the moment. It, it's a lot of fun. There's Gillis and Poirier 